All right, now I want to talk a little bit about priorities. These are the compound's priorities, okay? And these are the things he wants to focus on. He's got four, and in the next slide I'll show you some of mine. First one is focusing Afghanistan, what's going on at OEF, all right? Okay, can't argue with that. And that's, that's our priority also. So when things come to balancing, you know, we're, we're focused and ready to support uh, what's going on in OEF, which isn't just Afghanistan, it's predominantly Afghanistan. Then it's to rebalance the force. So, yes, he's looking at Afghanistan, but he's looking at the future also. Okay, what's his next billiard shot that he's going to be taking? And he has to make sure that we're balanced, we get the right equipment, and that we are that middleweight force that he talks about and uh, you know, tells Congress about and tells the President about and tells the Secretary about it. Okay? Part of that's a closer alignment to the active component. You know, the better we can get aligned, the better we can support each other uh, through communications or actually proximity where we're located <coughs> is, uh, is good. Education and training, very, very important, especially when you're drawn down. Okay, we need individuals that are trained so when we grow again, and we never know when that's going to occur, that we've got a cadre of folks that are educated in what's going on. And we've learned a lot in the last 10 years about complex environments, right? So we want to retain that and help that information grow because the, the uh, places that we're going to be involved with, what we're going to be doing uh, is complex environments, absolutely complex. And it's more than just going and fighting, right? It's, it's either preventing the fighting, right, or it's a no-kid nation building, right? And we've done things that the military was never intended to do. Restore rule of law. That's everything from apprehension and rolling up a uh, terrorist doing a manhunting stuff to laying evidence in front of a judge to, you know, convicting an individual to put them in a... Um, in a, a uh, you know, like a penal, uh, penal institution that, in, in which that they can track their prisoners, okay? I mean, we're working both Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's questionable, more than questionable, as to whether they can track who they have in detention. <coughs> so the education is real important, and of course in the reserves, we got reserves spread across our country, 183 sites in 48 states, Puerto Rico and San Diego. Um, if that's not distributed ops, I don't know what is. And then with, with those differences in the reserves, everything from orders to pay to a lot of the other challenges that we have and some of the, uh, the legal, legal challenges, we do complex operations. And then the last is keeping the faith, right? And this is keeping the faith with single Marines, married Marines, their families, our extended families, our veterans, right, and, and the communities with which we're involved. I mean, the reserves do better than anybody else at reaching out and touching those local communities across the United States. So that, that's something unique also. And we carry the Commandant's message to those states and to those various speaking engagements where we send color guards, funerals, etc. cetera. Um, that's very, very special about the uh, reserves. Next slide. <coughs> 